Uh, I'm Mike McConnell from the University of Virginia. So I started coming to single cell meetings with the very first one here at Cold Spring Harbor. And then I started teaching in the course. I came first as a lecturer four years ago and have been teaching for the past three years. The course has really strong both wet lab and computational or what we would call dry lab components. Uh, the wet lab components are what I'm most uh, most involved with. So Dave Chenoweth and I uh, split the wet lab component where he pretty much handles the amino acid side and I handle the nucleic acid side. In other words, I do the DNA and RNA and he does the protein. My name is David Chenoweth. My home institution is University of Pennsylvania and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry. So I teach mod a module on, um, on protein localization and controlling protein localization in a spatially defined way in, in single cells to kind of tease out pathways and processes. It uh, benefits a wide range of students. So um, certainly the, most of our students are studying either cancer or neuroscience, I think, or the immune system. I think those tend to be the three areas where single cell analysis is uh, sort of finding the most applications at the moment. Um, we try to get an equal mix of graduate students and postdocs. Um, we'll have some students, uh, or some of the people who take the class are, are more senior people. Um, we've had core, uh, core leaders um, uh, take the class before, and even a couple of industry people. Uh, likewise, people who study microbiomes and uh, bacteria and various elements of evolution have also taken the course before. Three years ago, I co-taught the course with its founder, Jim Eberwein, and Amy Herr, and several of the students commented that they'd like to learn more analysis. And uh, that year, we also had Jean Yeo come from UCSD and give a seminar, and Jean felt very confident about bringing a bioinformatics component to the class. And I think he's done so with wild success. I am, my name is Olga Botvinik. I am a bioinformatics scientist at the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub, part of the data science team. Uh, this is my second year teaching. Last year I was a TA, this year I'm an instructor, and I've been developing and designing the bioinformatics curriculum from scratch. Before um, I came along, there was very little bioinformatics, um, but this year and last year, the students, when they came to the course and they asked why you're here, many of them said, because I need to figure out what to do with my data. My first goal for the students in my module is for them to not be afraid of programming. Then the goals are applying machine learning algorithms, um, learning the differences between linear and non-linear methods, how that has implications for your data in single cell data, especially because there's a lot of dropout, how to deal with these kind of algorithms robustly. But first is, getting over this um, fear and from there we can do a lot. Because uh, this far I've submitted cells for, to our sequencing core at Stanford uh, and eventually I'll get just a data set, a uh, big file with a bunch of numbers uh, and the biggest concern is getting it and not really understanding or not knowing how to analyze that data set. But at the same time I don't just want to hand over the data to someone else and have them analyze it all. I would like to at least get an understanding of what's going on and that was my big motivator for taking the course. My name is Emily Wheeler. I'm a graduate student with Jean Yeo. I'm finishing up my third year in graduate school. So this is my first year um, being involved in the course and I'm a teaching assistant for the bioinformatics section of the course. I helped to give feedback on the content of the curriculum that we'd be presenting to the students. I helped to develop some of the introduction uh, lectures and introductory workflows to kind of get them up to speed on basics of the command line, basics of Python. So I come from actually a very similar background as the students. I uh, was trained in biology and I didn't start working in bioinformatics until I got to graduate school and it was something that I realized um, through my undergraduate research that you can no longer do science unless you understand bioinformatics. I think that's, that's, the, that's the, if I can say, like the beauty of the course is the fact that it combines these two things. Um, I think some of the, the lab techniques are, are cutting edge and it's, it's useful to have a you know, first-hand experience of doing these techniques. But also, uh, with single cell technologies, you get so much data that you know, figuring out how to analyze this data is really, really difficult. And I think having like, uh, bioinformaticians at hand to guide you through the process, teach you how to do some of the, even the most basic things, I think that was, a, that was an invaluable experience. Um, how to do so and how to do it correctly so because you can calculate everything right uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it has a biological meaning or it's biological relevant but and here I can really someone showed me someone was really sitting next to me and and teached me that's really what was really great and awesome so I really enjoyed that so I learned a lot at least in this course, the breadth of everything, like we cover DNA, RNA, protein, mass spectro spectroscopy, everything. 
But within that, we kind of try to tie in together all the experiments that we've done. So from sample preparation to whole genome sequencing, down to single cell isolation, and the different bioinformatic analyses that we can do. And then the lectures every night is pretty special, I think, to be able to grab a beer with one of these like really famous speakers. Um, and we had some speakers who are sort of the founders of the single cell field, which I think is quite special. It was a bit uh, intense at times. Uh, that, that I was not expecting. I mean, I expected it to be rigorous, of course, but I think it's a bit more than, than I had anticipated. The day in the life is a, a, is a bit hectic at the beginning. So uh, mornings in the class begin with the lecture, um, generally about the protocols and the methods that you'll be doing that day and a little bit of background about those methods. Then we're down in the lab by 10 and begin by isolating single cells and then doing all of the amplification procedures. And uh, that will continue through the day until we have a, uh, a seven o'clock lecture in the class every night by external speakers that come. And one of the real highlights of the class is that the leaders in the field of single cell analysis will come from literally all over the world. We bring in speakers from Europe, from Australia, from all over the states and Canada. Um, to come and give talks um, about their research and the technologies they're developing and um, really developing the cutting edge methods that we'll all be using more moving forward. The students are incredibly motivated, uh, eager to learn, and um, not just here to learn, but here to ask questions. And I see a lot of um, them questioning what's the next step or what would the next tool be or where is the field going? So that's really exciting to see that they're not just learning techniques from the lab, but they're thinking about what the next steps would be and what needs to be developed in the future. I think it's uh, single cell technology is just growing so quickly that I hope to impress students that there's a lot available now and likewise a lot of new things coming. And so it's a very exciting time to be doing this work and it's a very interesting area of biology. The favorite thing that I've had in, in interacting with the students is really getting a sense of the science from their perspective, but it's really interesting to get to interact with them and think about all the different ways that you can apply the methods that we're talking about um, and new ideas to be able to solve unmet needs in science. So it's been really cool to get a different perspective and see how they would take um, the tools that we're teaching them in a different direction. I've met a lot of interesting people, which is uh, graduate students and postdocs uh, that could be potentially mentors down the road, other connections that hopefully can be maintained. Um, I was pretty lucky because my lab partner is ultra, also interested in brain tumors and so we're already, we were just chatting about kind of planning experiments that we're going to collaborate on together and um, him visiting my lab and my visiting his lab and, um, and I don't think we would have met each other otherwise. If we set up a lab with just the students we have on this course, It'll be like one of the best labs in the world, I think. It's just, I think we've got a really fantastic bunch, fantastic faculty, and I just really enjoyed my time here. It's, it's incredibly intense, but incredible fun. Um, I think be prepared to work really hard, but be prepared to, uh, to come out of this with an experience that you're gonna remember forever.